Example 171 Tech. A study looked at the relationship between the number of hours spent sitting each day and the LDL cholesterol number for each participant. The study, which used a prospective cohort study design, followed 40 participants for 10 years. At the start of the study, all participants had similar LDL numbers but varied with respect to the number of hours they spent being sedentary. The results of the analysis are given below. Use the results to answer the questions that follow. All right, let's look at part A. It says, is there a significant linear relationship between these variables? If so, is the correlation positive or negative? In order to determine if there's a significant linear relationship between the variables, you want to look at the output here. Take a look at the line that's associated with the slope. They give you the coefficient for the slope, and then they tell you its p-value in the model here. If that p-value is small, or in other words, less than alpha, we should reject the null hypothesis. Remember what the null hypothesis says. The null hypothesis says that the slope is equal to zero, which indicates there's no linear relationship. The alternative hypothesis says that the slope is not equal to zero, and therefore there is a significant linear relationship. In this case, we're rejecting the null hypothesis and supporting the alternative. So we're concluding here that there is a significant linear relationship. And if that's the case, then we need to think about is the relationship positive or negative? If you take a look at the coefficient that they provided to us, that coefficient indicates that the relationship is positive. All you have to do to answer that question is to look at the coefficient they provided and say, is the slope there a positive number or a negative number? Well, the value is 14, it's a positive number, so we assume that there's a positive linear relationship between these two variables. So basically what this says is that two variables are moving in the same direction, right? As the number of sedentary hours increases, so does the LDL cholesterol number. Remember the LDL cholesterol number is the bad cholesterol, right? That's the sticky one that gets stuck to the inside walls of the arteries and causes blockages. So the LDL number seems to go up as the number of hours spent sitting each day increases. And of course, the opposite is true as well. If the number of hours you spend sitting each day goes down, then the LDL number seems to go down with it. Okay, let's look at part B then. It says interpret the coefficient of determination R squared. All right, so the value for R squared is 52.18%. What that indicates is that 52.18% of the variation in the Y variable, in this case the LDL cholesterol level, can be attributed to or explained by the number of hours spent sitting each day. So what this is indicating is essentially that when you see two groups that have different average LDL levels, a very powerful variable to help explain those differences in their LDL levels is this item, number of sedentary hours each day. If you know that for the two groups, it'll help to explain about half of the differences that you see in their LDL levels. So that's some powerful information then. That means it's an important variable in terms of predicting LDL levels, right? If you want to predict LDL levels on average for a group, knowing something about the number of hours they spend sitting is useful because about half of the variation between two different groups' average LDL levels can be explained by knowing something about the number of hours they spend sitting each day. All right, so that's a really important variable. And again, the R squared value is pretty high here. All right, let's look at part C. It says find and interpret the correlation coefficient R. All right, so we don't have R, but they do give us R squared. And in this simple model, we can simply say that the absolute value of R is equal to the square root of R squared. So in other words, if I want to know the absolute value of R, I just take the square root of, in this problem, 0.5218, which is just R squared written as a decimal. All right, let's work that out and see what it comes up to be. So we'll take the square root of 0.5218. And when we do that, we get 0.722 to three decimal places. Now remember, that's only the absolute value of R. We don't know the sign of R by doing this. We just know its absolute value. So we don't know if that R should be positive or negative unless we have the slope. And we do have the slope here. We can see that the slope in our equation is positive. The coefficient for the slope variable is positive. Therefore, R should be positive. So try to remember that the slope and R always have the same sign. So if your slope is positive, your R is positive. So we can then say simply that R is equal to 0.722. All right, we have two more questions to address. Let's go look at those. So for question D, it says interpret the slope of the provided regression equation. Whenever you're interpreting slope, remember the slope represents the change in the Y variable that you get for every unit change in the X variable. 
So what that means in this particular problem is to say that as the number of hours spent sitting each day increases by one, you get a 14 point increase in the LDL cholesterol level. Likewise, if you were to reduce the number of hours spent sitting each day by one hour, you would get a reduction of 14 points in the LDL level. So basically, every time the x variable or the number of hours spent sitting each day goes up by one, you get an additional 14 points on average in the LDL number. So again, that shows the importance again of this variable. It's very powerful in terms of estimating the LDL number. It seems to have a big impact on the LDL value. So once again, it's the unit increase in the number of hours spent sitting, or in other words, a, a one hour increase in the amount of hours you spend sitting each day will increase your LDL level on average by 14 points. All right, and finally it says, do these results imply that being sedentary causes higher LDL levels? It might be tempting to say that, but it's not actually something we can tell just from this simple study using correlation between two variables. All we can say here is that they seem to appear together at the same time. So if you sit a lot, for whatever reason, the LDL numbers tend to be higher for people who sit a lot. We don't know if there's some other variable contributing to that, right? For example, it could be that there's something related to the diet, right? Maybe there's a, a diet situation where the diet doesn't allow you to have lots of energy and you feel run down all the time. And that same diet also contributes to the LDL number. It could also be that maybe there's a weight issue, right? So maybe perhaps you're sedentary because you're overweight and you can't move around as easily. And that same you know, weight issue is causing an increase in LDL. And that's linked to, again, diet and other factors, right? There could be lots of ways to explain this. But ultimately, from this one set of data and this one study, it'd be hard to kind of jump to the conclusion that sitting causes higher LDL levels by itself alone. However, of course, with controlled studies and by controlling for certain variables like obesity and diet, etc., you might be able to get closer and closer to that conclusion. But from this one study and from what we have, it's not possible to say that. So remember, all we can say is that the two variables seem to appear together, or they seem to, in this case, move in the same direction. More time spent sitting, higher LDL levels.